So for some people, the path to love is a walk in the park. For me, it was like stumbling up Everest. I was about 30 when I realized that I was a certifiable Captain Save-A-Bro. <laughs> my picker was broken and my concept of love was twisted. Two things I enjoy. I enjoy a fixer-upper and I enjoy championing the underdog. <laughs> Used to be put those two together and yeah, I swooned. <sighs> the first guy, well, his mother threw him out of the house because he refused to quit school and get a full-time job. So, of course, I had to help him graduate and give him the love and support his mother wouldn't. It turns out that his mother left his father because he was a philanderer, and Junior was a chip off the old block. The last one, well, I helped save him from going to prison, and I reuni reunited him with his family. And that's when I realized that this guy would never be able to give me that level of love and support. And so I'd had it. I decided to put myself on a timeout and get my head together. A six year shutdown. Trust when I say that was not the plan going in. Um, I did learn a lot about myself though. I learned that I had this habit. I had confused the idea of nurturing and kindness with the idea that I had to earn love. I also noticed that I was busy finding these guys and trying to fit myself to them instead of finding a man who fit me. And so I spent some time between my ears and the more I got to know myself, the more worried I got. I thought, I will never find a man. And so I thought about who I am, because here's the thing about me. I care more about your spirit than your bank account. I care more about function than form. <laughs> and get this, this one will make you laugh. I believe that small things can change the world. <laughs> me, <laughs> yeah. Um, I also have to tell you, I do have a shallowness about me. You must be six foot to ride this ride. <laughs> so, you know, mama always said, every pot has its lid. Okay, so I decided it was time to get back out there. But I hadn't got a clue how I was going to do that. And by chance, I came across this concept of chubby chasers. So I went online and just to check it out, and I discovered they have a name for girls like me, BBW, Big Beautiful Woman. I have to tell you that was so much better than the buffalo butt they called me in high school. Yeah. So yeah, I, I ran into some pervs, but I found some really genuine voices and I decided to join an online community. Now here's the thing, working, dating through a chubby chaser site was not for me. I was not about to make my, my relationship about my body. But it did get me over my self-image issues and gave me the confidence to go out on a regular site and be true about who I was. And so I joined Plenty of Fish. <laughs> I had some great dates, I really did. It turns out it's so much easier dating as an adult because I was able to tell people who I am and what I was about before I met them. And so when we got together, we had a good time even if we didn't have that chemistry for a second date. So the sixth guy in, I go to meet him at what used to be Biddle's, you know, that whole meet in public, stay safe. Anyway, I walk in the door and I see him and I think to myself, oh, so not my type. See, the thing is, I, you know, I like my men lithe, pensive looking, a little rough around the edges. This guy, I didn't think he had ever met a bad boy in his life. But, you know, I said, okay. So he goes to pick up the flowers that he's brought me for this date. Oh, he deserves that, yes. <laughs> and as he comes around with the flowers, he wipes out everything on the counter behind him. <laughs> I would have been mortified. I was mortified for him. Do you know what he did? He laughed at himself. And in this moment, I thought, ooh, you better check yourself. And I opened myself to him. And so we went into dinner and we had a good meal. We had a good conversation. Not only did he listen, but he engaged. He told me his truths, the good, the bad, the ugly, though he did yada yada some of the details. <laughs> 
then I introduced him to a pal of mine that was working that night. He was playing at the bar. And he went over to meet him, and there was none of that guy ego. He just engaged. He talked to the guy about his music and talked to him about his instrument. And so, yes, at the end of that night, he got the goodnight kiss. <laughs> he got the second date, which is kind of a good thing considering I married him last year. So, yeah. Now, I have to tell you, <laughs> crazy love is a hard habit to break. I had gotten so used to the neuroses that was a part of what I believed to be love that I was actually missing it. The first time I de declared myself to my husband, I said, um, I think I love you. I knew it was love a year later at Christmas when we had our first fight. We went shopping and I was going to buy Christmas lights. I had planned this for a year, but it was a lean Christmas, and he thought, you know, honey, this isn't the year for that expenditure. And so I acquiesced, and I stewed. All the way home, we had silence. He had no idea that I had, you know, concerns about money and that I had learned to spend responsibly, and his comment felt like judgment to me. And so we walked in the door, and I let him have it. I ranted and demanded a reaction from him. And he said, um, do you think you can give me a few minutes to think about this? <laughs> and so I went in the other room, and 10 minutes later he came in and he apologized unequivocally. Swoon! <laughs> Here's the thing. Where I used to be, the one who took care of the relationships, now he is the rock where I used to stuff my feelings and my thoughts for love, he now drags them out of me in the name of love. Where I believe that I had to earn love, I now have a love that is impossible to earn. We still have our challenges, trust me. I am a social justice warrior. My husband, let's just say he's awakening. For the first two years of our relationship, we'd have these debates, and invariably we'd get to this point where I'd say to him, spoken like a white guy. <laughs> Eventually, he'd had enough of that, <laughs> and he pushed back. And that day, I didn't use my patent phrase. Instead, I broke down privilege for him. And here's but one of the reasons I love my husband. He was angry, he felt attacked, but he listened and he got it. He understands that the way he thinks and the things that he does is an expression of the privilege that he actually has. Now, don't get it twisted, we still have our times. Like two weeks ago, I was telling him about using hypermasculine language, but you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> and I'm really not easy to be, live with. I've been on my own since I was 17 years old. And I had some walls up. Those babies were fortified. And I have to tell you, he moved in with me. And we lived together for eight years before we found a place of our own. And it really takes someone special to keep their sense of self while surrounded with so much of somebody else. In the end, what I've learned is that love is a verb, not a noun. It is in the decisions that we make day in, day out, moment to moment. And I have to tell those people who say love is colorblind, I call bull BS. <laughs> to be blind to another person's culture is to never know the person you say you love. So to close, I wanna just finish with two things. On the anniversary of our first date, my husband gave me a master's class in romance. He went back to the restaurant and bought me the glass of toothpicks that he had knocked off the counter that <laughs> night. <laughs> now I have to tell you, 12 years after beginning my search for healthy love, there's one thing I can tell you for sure. And that is that when it comes right down to it, Love is sweet, if not sweeter, when engaged at last, if not at first. Have a good night, folks. Yeah.